Thank you very much. Um, the leadership of uh, the chamber and uh, the leadership of the EFF. We have a deputy president of the EFF here. And uh, the national... <laughs> <laughs> you are not recognized. <laughs> we have uh, our national chairperson here and members of parliament from the Economic Freedom Fighters. Well, uh, I thought I was not going to say anything until you said there is a difference between us because as you were coming, uh, Mr. Santa was very happy that we are almost there. We, we, we're finding each other. But I realize now, your understanding of economic freedom it's a completely different from ours because yours it's a promotion of free market and neoliberal uh, policies and uh, we are giving economic freedom the leftist radical interpretation which means amongst others that uh, the land the banks, the natural resources, and strategic sectors of the economy should be in the hands of the people. We agree that we need to create an equality in this country, but that equality is not going to be achieved until there is a decisive state intervention. Because those who are at an advanced stage are beneficiaries of a state that protected them, are beneficiaries of a state that gave them opportunities to the exclusion of black people. And therefore, to create an impression that black people should make it on their own without state intervention, it's unrealistic and unacceptable. The state must take a deliberate decision to nationalize the land and distribute it for equal a use for everyone. The state has passed a law in this country that willing buyer, willing seller. Even if people want to buy the land, if there is no willing seller, will never own a piece of land. It doesn't matter how much money we get from wherever, God knows. And then we come here and say we want to buy a piece of land in Stellenbosch, if there is no willing seller, will not buy that land. Therefore, even when we have money, we'll still not own a piece of land in our own country. So we have to get a situation where the land is owned by the state and is given to all of us black and white. Because 80% of land owners in this country are white people. Yet 80% of the population is black people. It's unacceptable. We, we have to have this debate, and that's why you call us controversial and all sorts of names, because you are refusing to listen to the truth. And anyone who speaks the truth is an unacceptable person in society. And we're not saying this truth in a violent way. We're saying it openly in a frank manner. 80% of the almost 10% of the population owns the land. And without the land, we are nothing. That's why what followed 1652 was land dispossession. Because you knew that with the land, you have everything. You've got mineral resources, you've got natural resources, and you can do anything. So we remain a conquered nation. We remain a conquered nation. And like you said in 1987, Mr. Santa, that negotiations must go on, parties must talk, 
And then thereafter, business must continue. Business is continuing as you predicted in 1987. Exactly what you said. Apartheid economy is still continuing. Because when you went to the table, when business negotiated with the former liberation movement, you made certain things very clear. You were not prepared to surrender the land. You were not prepared to surrender the economy. You told them you can have a black president, but you are not going to do anything with our property ownership. When the liberation started in South Africa, it was not about voting. Voting was by the way. The formation of liberation movements followed the wars of dispossession. And Africans realized that if we fight as small groups, we get defeated. We need to come together and fight together under a progressive body. Fight for what? For reclaiming of our land. So you can't tell us we gave you 1994, that's enough. That's not what we formed the liberation for. We formed the liberation to reclaim our land, to reclaim our wealth. The economy is the land. The economy is the mines and all mineral resources. The economy is the food. There is no food without the land. The economy is the banks, retail stores. We need the participation of our people in the technology and science because we cannot succeed to fight even diseases that, diseases that can be cured for as long as our people do not own pharmaceutical companies. The diseases that must be cured easily kill our people because pharmaceutical companies are owned by capital which is obsessed with maximizing profit at the expense of people. So we don't subscribe uh, to those types of... All of this infrastructure, me and you must agree about, which we are agreeing, will never be realized because it has been proven that taxes alone cannot raise sufficient capital for the state. We have been collecting taxes since 1994. We still have a problem of infrastructural development because the money is not enough. We said to capital, run the economy, take charge of the economy, and through you paying taxes, then we'll be able as a state to develop this country. The same capital which we said run the economy still is not paying tax. They engage in financial illicit flows. They engage in aggressive tax avoidance in the country. No decisive legislation to deal with that. People take money in South Africa and invest it in tax havens. They are untouchable. If you do anything to them, that is an interference. The state must not interfere. People, the investors will leave the country if the state goes on interfering in the, in the economy. So we do not agree. We have this problem. We have this problem we are having today of an inequality which is growing, which is racially based because of the economy which is in the hands of capital. The economy is not in the hands of the state as we speak now. It's in your hands. You are the ones who are owning strategic sectors of the economy. And therefore, if anything that is in the hands of private sector is so excellent and successful, why is Africa not successful? Because the economy of Africa is not in the hands of socialist state or communist state. It's private owned. If capitalism worked for America and Europe, capitalism has not worked for Africa. Africa has not failed because of a capitalist, I mean, because of communist or socialist economic policies. It failed because the multinational and capitalists come and milk our resources, exploit our resources, and leave this continent without anything. So we do not agree. So a solution, which is very clear in the hands of the EFF, is that we need the expropriation of land without compensation. And people say that is extreme, that is unacceptable. Land was taken through black genocide. 
We're not talking white genocide. We're talking legislation passed through parliament, democratic parliament, which will say the state is the owner of the land and the land shall be allocated to people who have indicated clearly what they want to do with this land and whether what they want to do, it is in the public interest and purpose. Because there are a lot of pieces of land all over the continent. They are idling. Some of them are even foreign-owned. Yet black people live in congested environments. They do not own a piece of land. When they try to occupy the land next to them, no, that land has been rezoned. It's owned by some fellow in London. We live like pigs in Alexander, in Langa, here, everywhere else, we have no land. And that is the first thing we need to do, expropriate the land so that we bring back the dignity of our people. There is no one who can have dignity and confidence if you do not own a piece of property. You remain a subject of those who own the means of production. We are tired of being subjects. We want to own. So we are of a view that even the mines, the banks, must be in the state ownership. But what do you do in a South African economy where already these things are in the hands of capital? You must establish your own bank as a state to compete the existing banks you must establish your own state-owned mining company. You must establish your own uh, pharmaceutical company. So we, we end by doing that, we do not shut down private ownership. The private ownership must coexist with state ownership, but the state must be the owner and the controller of such strategic sectors. Uh, of uh, the economy. Somebody is going to shout from the back and say the state is incompetent and everywhere else where the state is found, things do not run properly. It's not true. It's not true. I'm, I'm prepared to take you on because American army, American army is not, uh, is not private owned. It's a state owned. It's the biggest employer in the whole world. American Army is the, one of the best state-owned companies. This GPS you are talking about is a GPS that is produced by a state-owned company called American Army. This internet you have is produced by a state-owned company called American Army. So we must not be misled that everything else state-owned is inherently corrupt and therefore it will collapse. Even the private sector, even the private sector has got the same problem. The, pro the private sector, if we go to Jobeck High Court here, there are private companies being liquidated every day. So it's not true that everything else owned by private sector is inherently progressive. We all have weaknesses. Yes, come back home. SAA, who said SAA never produced profit before? The SAA produced profit before until the current government messed it up. So it's not because the SAA as a state-owned company is inherently uh, incompetent. You need a corrupt free government which will deploy the best men and women for the job to run state institutions and not to deploy friends. This ESCOM you are talking about, it ran properly at some point. And what is good about the whole thing is that there are some lessons we can learn from apartheid because these things were state-owned under apartheid. They were state-owned under apartheid. They did well under apartheid, but for the few. So we have to learn and say, Instead of deploying cadres and party loyalists, let us get the best people to come and do the job. Now, uh, 
we have a situation in a situation in a country where most of the state run institutions did well before and as a result of the current corrupt leadership they are collapsing they are collapsing and therefore we must not say because there is an incapable leadership state institutions will inherently not do well i mean we can give many examples singapore is one of the countries with state-owned enterprises which are contributing decisively to the economy so we saying here in south africa anything that is going to help us it is a straight state intervention in partnership with private sector to run a successful economy anyway as you were shouting at the back i was not shocked because i don't raise comfortable things i must touch the nerve and i don't get i don't get easily shaken whether by sober or half sober people i have no problem at all no one get to scare me i express myself anywhere free without any fear or any intention of begging relationships i'm here to articulate the eff policy you like it or not it doesn't matter we are happy that uh, the the cape chamber invited us not because we share anything but because we can exchange ideas what is going to make south africa work what is going to make south africa work is platforms like this where we sit together and exchange ideas sometimes in a robust manner because it is good for our democracy we cannot just sit we cannot just sit in our comfort zones and not talk to each other we have to talk to one another sometimes uncomfortable as it might be it's a necessary discourse because it will build this country that's the madiba's legacy the ability to talk to those you even disagree with that's where we come from and uh, we believe that with this type of intervention south africa will be a better place we have noted all those uh, uh, international developments and even when it was nice time internationally we were still doing that not because of the global economy but because of the policies which were agreed to during the sunset clauses we need the sunrise clauses thank you